Hello again. The Jackrabbits say bye-bye to Coughlin Alumni Stadium with a win over the number two team in the nation. They beat Illinois State. And uh, is this kind of the complete game that we've been waiting for at home from the Jackrabbits? Hang I think it's as close to it as we've seen so far this year. This team's playing good football right now. It's not perfect by any stretch. Uh, led by the defense, in my opinion. These guys have been playing at a championship level uh, for the past few weeks, really. Uh, very excited about what these guys are showing us. Uh, special teams, number of items they need to clean up uh, on that front, and uh, you know, offensively and special teams. Had a few balls on the ground last Saturday that uh, able to dodge those bullets, um, but they need to clean that stuff up. But all in all, a big win against a very good football team last Saturday. Absolutely. There were 927 yards of total offense in this game, split almost right down the middle. The Jackrabbits wanted and needed to stop Redbird All-American running back Marshawn Coppridge, and they did. Just 55 yards on 22 carries for Coppridge. Uh, TJ Lally had nine tackles to lead the Jacks, and Jesse Bobbitt with an interception late in the first half. The Jacks turned that into a touchdown run by Taron Christian, and the freshman did not start the game again, but he did end up playing most of it, including the entire second half. That's Eric's call. You know, I, I, I've been around coaches that tell me what to do as an assistant, and it, it's their job as a head coach, but I never, I never felt comfortable uh, in that situation because you, you work so hard, and so Eric made the call, and I su supported him. And, uh, I mean, I changed one call in the game and it backfired, so that tells you, you know, what I should do as a head football coach. And coach, talking about the squib kick at the end of the first half that did not go quite as they planned it, uh, but we'll get to that in the big plays of the first half with Coach Stiglmeyer when we come back. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. Well, this was a big win against a team that has been a national powerhouse in the last few seasons, Illinois State. And here is Coach Stig on getting the job done and then the big plays of the first half. Big win uh, considering our goals and, and where we're at and a lot of things kind of piled up on that day. Uh, but you should get high for a little while, you know, get excited about it for a little while, but then not get caught up in that. All right, let's get to the highlights, and there were lots of them in this game. It was a great football game on a beautiful afternoon. The last game on the grass at Coughlin Alumni Stadium, and this is the second possession of the game, and Illinois State interception, first turnover in six conference games, but things did not go well early on in the first quarter. Well, the, you know, I, there, there's a one-play offense, right? They had one play, uh, in fact, uh, most of their scores were based on big plays. We got to make the tackle there for a two-yard gain. That kid's a good player, but uh, so is Jimmy Forsyth, the guy that missed the tackle. Anthony Warham is the wide receiver, number 82. He had 10 touchdown catches coming in, and they get it to him for the first touchdown of this game. Yeah, again, again, smart by them going after the guy that just gave up the big play. We preach playing the present, so Jimmy's got a chance there to get that ball out of his hands and, and make him keep lining up, but uh, we, we gave him the score, essentially. All right, Redbirds strike first, 7 to nothing. Illinois State. Karen Christian, a quarterback, now hits Matt Raymond. Got a lot of different receivers involved in this game. Well, we need to. We need to change up, keep guys fresh. We, we have good players. Uh, good design by Coach Eidsness in that play. Uh, opened up that opening in the middle. Uh, here you see the, the special part of Taryn. Uh, he can make plays with his feet, even just buying more time. Uh, Brandon had a good day. He had a really good day for us. Brandon Andrews, 23 yards, coming back to make that catch there. Third and 14, uh, third and four here, excuse me. And on the money to Winicky though, but Birch played very well for Illinois State defensively. He did, he did. And uh, I mean, we're playing the number two team yeah. in the nation, so they're going to have some good players. This is disappointing. You know, those points came back to haunt us or lack thereof. There are a lot of decisions were made based on point differential, uh, he, he's got to make that play. But this was the highlight of the game right here. Our defense defending their run, both their quarterback and, and Coppridge, their tailback, phenomenal job by our defense. Coppridge came in averaging 162 a game in the Valley. Jack's holding to 55, and it's 7 to nothing. Illinois State into the first quarter, tipped here, and uh, intercepted again by the Redbirds. A little too high, uh, but it did hit Cam in the hands. He's, you know, he's got to make that play. Taron's got to get the ball down, whatever. But again, you, you, those does the play keep going? This is unfortunate that we give him the ball in that, that part of the field. All right, your defense, though, especially Jerian Butler, starting to make some plays. Jerian had a good game, and they, they were matched up against one of the 
best receivers in America. So uh, he did get a bunch of yards, but they, they made a bunch of plays also. Richard Freshman Jordan Brown making one here for you as well. Yeah, great job by his position coach, thinking that it's a long yardage. Let's get a longer corner in there, and uh, Jordan makes a good play. He's going to become a really, really good player. So we're 20 minutes into the game, and it starts to turn around a little bit. Uh, Coming up after this catch by Christian Gibbs, who made a couple of them like that. But here it starts to turn a little bit. Jesse Bobbitt going to step in and make a game changer. Yeah, big, big play. You know, Jesse gives a blitz look, and then and then uh, I don't know if uh, there, Roberson really even saw him, but makes a big play in the football game. And, and again, the football game is decided by three, four, five plays. The team that wins it, uh, this is one of those plays. Down to the 35-yard line a couple plays later, Taron Christian. We'll take it into the corner. Yeah, just a, a quarterback power uh, off the edge. Uh, we get him blocked, but there's always going to be another guy there. He beats the guy, gets in the end zone. Another benefit of, of his athletic ability. Jack's tied up at seven apiece. And then some more defense here. Copperich again for no gain. Yeah, just uh, you can just see we dominate the line of scrimmage. Guys get in their gaps. Coach Rogers, the linebackers coach, Coach Christian, safeties coach, Coach Brown. Courier, uh, uh, Jackson, those guys did a phenomenal job defending the run. A couple of minutes uh, left in the first half here. Taron Christian taking off up the middle for 13 yards, gets a first down, and then another third and five coming up here in Christian to Trevor Wesley, another guy who made a couple of catches. Yeah, it's a two-minute drill. Uh, we work it every week, uh, hardly ever get to use it. Here we're, here we're making hay with it. Again, they have to defend Taron's running ability. He can throw the ball. You can see us hustling there. Uh, here, here's another, just using his legs, a great play, throwing across his body, and uh, Dallas Goddard puts in scramble drill and works lateral with the quarterback. Hey, that's all practice, that's not a fluke. You should give the ball to the official, <laughs> not our left guard uh, there. Uh, but again, uh, using his feet, uh, battling, battling, and just buy some time. And uh, uh, they great play by uh, Onasorgi, our center there, knocking the ball down. Again, we practice that. All right, Taron goes out for one play here, and Zach Lujan, who played the first two series, comes in, hooks up with Winnicky for a touchdown. One play, heads up. Uh, Kyle Paris comes across, blocks guy. He's not even supposed to block, and uh, and puts it on the money. I'm so proud of Zach Lujan. Uh, you know, obviously Winnicky gets the touchdown, but uh, great job by by Lou. And when Zach comes in here, was he looking at Jake the whole time for, on that play? It was a read. He was supposed to throw to the the, the best shot. Now Jake quite often is a pretty good yeah. uh, gamble to throw to, but uh, he had to read it. And again, Zach Lujan, credit to him for coming in and being ready to make that play. Right here, here's a 20 year old young man that was uh, taken out as the starter. I mean, how many people are? They're almost taught to hang their head. This guy's into the game. We give him one shot, he goes in and throws a touchdown pass. I can't, I can't measure uh, how special that is. Well, Zach Lujan gives him the lead. Taron Christian continues at the controls in the second half. Jake Winicky does that thing where he catches it and runs for a long touchdown, and the defense makes a goal line stand. They block a field goal. All of that coming up next. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. There was some crazy stuff, as there usually is in a football game, but a lot in this Illinois State game. You had uh, the squib kick by the Jacks at the end of the first half that only got to the 50-yard line, and uh, Stig said that was my fault. I, I made that call, but it, you make that call, you, you think you can get that a little further than that, right? Well, you hope, yeah, that it doesn't go directly into one right. of the upbacks, but hey, you know, uh, you got a kicker out there who hasn't been on the field all year because, uh, you know, your, your number one goes down. Yeah, Jay Carlson had been injured in the scrum after the Jacks had a missed extra point opportunity, so Sam Coon, the kid from Sioux Falls, comes out and has to make that kick at the end of the first half. Didn't go quite as planned. No, but, not exactly. Yeah, you set the Redbirds up with some decent field goals. And then they come in and they stub a field goal of their own. So there was all there was all kinds of things that could have gone either way. Well, in this game. like we talked about to open the show, certainly some things to clean up uh, specifically when we look at special teams. Yeah. Plenty of opportunities to improve. All right, uh, let's get to the second half and the Jackrabbits. Uh, Taron Christian made a lot of big plays on the run, going to his right, which Stig says not really part of the plan. It's just part of Taron Christian being a really good athlete. He is simply uh, feeling pressure and bailing to his right, and and you know when we defend a quarterback, we study him. When they bail right or bail left, do they throw the ball? And if we got a guy that doesn't throw it one way or another, we try to get him to bail that way. We'll give up contain. 
Uh, Taron's just a, he's a heady guy for a true freshman. All right, we'll see him make some very big plays, getting out of the pocket and going to his right. Illinois State, though, with the ball here first in the second half. Trey Roberson going nowhere. You know, they, we had defended uh, Coppridge, the running back. They call a quarterback runner. We defended even better. You know, I can't say enough about our defense, their pursuit, their execution. Just really, really special in this game. All right, and here, here's Taron going to his right. Yeah, here's Taron, but, but really good protection by the fat guys. And, and he scrambles, and so Trevor Wesley comes all the way across the field. Uh, makes a play in the sidelines. All those things are practiced. Uh, seldom come into play here, that here, big play in the football game. All right, enough protection again. Blitz coming. Taron delivers it to Brandon Andrews. Yeah, you can see how poised he is. He knew that guy was coming off the edge. Uh, great play, Same, very similar to the one Jake Wendicke caught. And, and uh, you know, he, uh, Brandon's been hurt, so guys get excited for guys like that. He's a senior, uh, really, really important. This is disappointing. You know, this is uh, this play is going to go for a touchdown, and, and uh, we had yelled out the tight split, watch the drag, and we just had some linebackers not do their job, a safety not do his job, and that's a great player, and uh, consequently, uh, they get right back into the game. That was a holy nutmeg, though, because you knew what was coming, huh? Well, I, I, yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> I don't know if I said it there. I was yelling <laughs> something, but nothing worse than that. All so. right, 19-14, Jack still in the lead. This is one of the few times uh, Trey Roberson, the quarterback, got away for 20 yards here. Doesn't end up hurting you as uh, the Jacks will get the ball back as we go to the fourth quarter here, and uh, they give it to Coppridge. He goes nowhere. Yeah, again, you can see that we, we dominate the line of scrimmage, and, and that's against a really good running team. And so uh, credit, and he's reading that sometimes, so we're also taking care of the quarterback. So uh, Max Blitz here. Uh, TJ gets to him. We use that a couple times in the game, and again, when 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 it's called, I, I close my eyes. I'm not a blitz guy, so uh, uh, did did a really good job. And then the Jack took the ball back here. Jake Winicky shaking off Josh Birch and going 74 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, wide open, catches the ball, corner catches up. He's got the strength, the athletic ability to to really physically run out of the cornerbacks hands and, and again another huge play in a tight football game. Second touchdown for Winnicky in the game. He's got 26 touchdowns already in his career. Jack's up 25 14 and then Warham gets loose here on a, on a double move. You know, we got to get this guy. We got to get him sacked because the double move, first of all the, cor the, the safety's got to be on that upfield shoulder of that receiver but he had a lot of time. He stepped up you know, again, a defense is always a, everybody doing their job. And then a series here, Coach, where every inch makes a difference. Stop Coppertz right at the goal line. Huge, huge play in the football game. Uh, never give up. Never, never, you know, you talk about inches. Uh, some special things are going to happen here based on inches. Uh, here they're kind of trying to run a quarterback sneak, and somebody's messed up. They jump off sides. <laughs> now, they, now it becomes yards uh, for us. And they, yeah, they get into a third goal after this, even after penalty, you stop them there, it ends up in a field goal attempt, and who blocks this? Uh, Kellen Sulik. You know, uh, Jesse Courier, uh, when he teaches the, every week when he teaches the field goal PAT block, he talks about you don't know who's going to be the guy that comes free, come hard, and there's a, one of our fat guys in the middle getting his hand up and blocking the, the field goal. Sulik, an interception last week, blocked field goal this week. Uh, ISU gets the ball back, though. This looked like a T.J. Lally strip and should have gone the other way, but they call it back. Yeah, there was a lot of confusion on that play with the officials. And, and again, I'm glad I'm a coach. I try to do my job, but uh, uh, that could have been an interception. It could have been maybe an incomplete pass. They call it a complete pass. And it gives them another crack at it here, and Roberson goes to Warren for a touchdown. Yeah, we just got to keep – we got we to stay close to that guy. He had 240 yards receiving. You, you know who their favorite guy is. Stay on his, his shoulder and make it a tougher play. He had eight catches for 241 yards. He was uh, good in this game, but he, here's the two-point conversion, and you stop it. Great job of controlling him. You can see how concerned our, our DNs are of, of keeping him in the pocket, and he has to throw it up on his back foot, and we're in position to, to make it a tough catch. So it stays a 25-20. Jackrabbit lead onside kick here with a minute 16 to go. Does not go the distance it needs to, and Jordan Brown is on it, and then victory formation coming up. Yeah, huge. Uh, again, uh, those are tough to execute onside kicks, and uh, we, get, we end up getting it. And then my favorite formation, victory, take a knee. We do that every Friday. We practice that formation <laughs> just to get a feel for how that would be in a game like that. This was such a fun game to watch from a stand fan point, uh, fan standpoint because of all the crazy things that happened. And it, was it fun for you not on the sideline in a game like this? The, 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 no, no. <laughs> Football games are seldom fun for right. the coaching staff. But, but, but I was excited about how the fans were into it. I mean, we didn't have a great crowd, but the, the people that were there really helped us win this football game. All right, last game at Coughlin. Are you nostalgic at all? A little I, I'm for sure about I'm this? I'm nostalgic. Uh, 
uh, you know, I've been I've been here over half the history of uh, the stadium, so a uh, special place, a uh, lot of special memories. But my, my heart always goes back to the players and the memories they have, and we had a special memory Saturday. So the Jackrabbits get the big win that they needed. South Coast State number five this week in the uh, national stats poll and the coaches poll. Illinois State drops to number six, but South Coast State is high as they've been ranked all season now at number five. And, and Coughlin Alumni Stadium, by the way, this was the last game for the Jacks on the natural grass there. And these were the pictures on Monday as they started to tear into it. Uh, the turf's going to come out, and eventually this week, sometime, they're going to knock down that press box on the grandstand side. So. Bye bye to Coughlin after 54 years. Been a heck of a run uh, for a good old stadium. A lot of great memories for a whole lot of people. And uh, but you know, progress. Time to move on. Going to be brand new uh, next season. Well, in this game against Illinois State, the Jackrabbits threw three interceptions, but they had one big one of their own. The pick by Jesse Bobbitt in the first half. Up next, we'll go to the board. Have Bobbitt and defensive coordinator Clint Brown tell you what was going on on this big play. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. All right, welcome back. Let's go to the board. This is uh, the Bobbitt interception. Big play for the Jackrabbits because it's already 7 to nothing. Illinois State is in the lead. They're at the SDSU 46-yard line going in, make it, trying to make this a 14 nothing game. But Jesse Bobbitt is sitting out here. This guy's already caught a pass right before this for 24 yards. And they're going to try to go right back to him. It's first and ten. What happens here with uh, Bobbitt sitting out here? Well, you know, Jackrabbits come out. They're in their base defense. Uh, Illinois State, they just made a big play, right? They, they, uh, big play over the middle, and they're saying, okay, it's first and ten. We're going to pick up a chunk. And we think, based on the look that these guys are giving us up front, that we can run three-step, uh, a quick passing uh, play. Three-step is what they call it. Um, quarterback one, two, three, and I'm going to make the throw, right? Uh, one thing, the, the big thing that, that really sets off the, the opportunity for Jesse um, is that the, as pre-snap, you, you see him roll down to the line of scrimmage. And he's not right on it, but it, it's, a, it's enough of a feint for Roberson to think, okay, if he's coming, yeah. I'm making that throw into the flat. We're going to pick up four or five yards, and we're calling it good. Okay. And you, you can tell he, pre, he predetermined at the line of scrimmage he was making that throw. And so when he drops back, uh, Jesse's at the line of scrimmage, and uh, as soon as the ball snapped, he pops back into, uh, into his zone. It's zone covered. It can't say exactly what the guys are playing, uh, but it looks like Jesse's got a, a curl to flat. Um, uh, responsibility on this play and so he drops back into his flat and uh, Trey's making that throw and all it comes down to is number seven making the play and that's exactly what he does just as he's done all season long. It's a flash card right? Stig's always talking about flash cards see it read it don't think too much react and that's what Bobbitt did. Absolutely. All right here's uh, Clint Brown the defensive coordinator and Jesse Bobbitt who made the play talking about this big play for the Jackrabbits. My gap my responsibility is the D gap here and so since uh, it was a tight split by number one. I decided to walk down into my gap, and uh, I walked down into the DF so I could not get cut out by the number one receiver here. I think Roberson thinks he's blitzing, and he's trying to throw the hot route. And Jesse did a great job of disguising that he, he looked like he was coming. And so I think he's just trying to throw the quick three-step drop out there and see Bobbitt pop out late, and it's too late. You know, because we're in a zone covers there. It's that, that's what we've been playing, actually, all game long. So it wasn't really anything knew we thought about it on Sunday I think they were a little confused on what we were doing out there on time, at times. My responsibility is the flat in the back if he comes out of the backfield and so I know I want to get hands on the tight end when he releases vertical just to maybe help out the safety because he has in vertical so when I released a punch and a couple steps vertical and then I was gonna bust my flat I think he might have thought I was maybe taking the tight end vertical but uh it was a good feeling I got to the flat and I made the play. They did tell me to give looks like that this week, showing off the edge so that he would either give it to Copperich or, uh, or, or make it a pass play. And so read that. And so yeah, um, it, was, it, was a good, it, was, it was a good play. It was a good scheme by me showing down uh, with the, what we worked each week. And so it was, yeah, that's what happened there. We didn't talk about that really at all all week because honestly that, that formation, that play was not a big part of their game plan. Um, we hadn't seen a whole lot of it really during the during the four game breakdown that we did on them. So that was that was all instinct. That's all him. That was a pretty good play. And thanks to those guys, the Jackrabbits, by the way, would score four plays later. They would get the Lujan to win a key touchdown as well right before the half. Two touchdowns in the final five minutes and go on to win it 25 to 20. Up next, Jacks at South Dakota on Saturday. This is going to be a ball game. We'll talk about that coming up next. 
Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. It is the Showdown Series game this Saturday. South Coast State at South Dakota. We will have it live here on Midco Sports Network. Uh, Pre-game show at 1230 and the game at 1 o'clock. The Coyotes, Hank, are 5-4 and four overall. They have won three of their last four in the conference. They beat Southern Illinois 34-31 last Saturday, and it has the potential to be a very good game, but Stig is not going to make it out to be anything special. I made the statement that I'm, I'm potentially the most boring coach in America, so most of the time I say the exact same thing. You know, the goal is to be 1-0, these are the keys, and uh, focus on fundamental type of things. Uh, I know the University of South Dakota and Coach Glenn will get him, get him excited. All right, Stegs are going to downplay it because that's what he should do as the head coach. But like, as he said, he's going to get these guys pumped up. He's going to have them ready because South Dakota is playing some good football right now. The Coyotes are five and four overall. They are three and three in the Valley. If they could get by the Jacks and and uh, Illinois State next week, South Dakota could get a playoff spot. Most likely would. They're going to be ready to play. There's a whole lot on the line this Saturday down in Vermillion. Um, we got good, two good football teams that really don't like each other. This is a rivalry game, no matter how anybody wants to spin it now. And for the first time since they renewed this rivalry, USD has something to play for other than pride. And they've made some, some big plays in some big games this year and come out with some big wins. So the Jackrabbits, they've got to be ready to go because the Coyotes, they're going to be ready to play for 60 minutes. All right, we've got the game here at 1 o'clock coming up this Saturday, and we'll see you next week on Jackrabbits.